Advanced Micro Devices is at a significant turning point. Let's talk the details. All right, guys, we just covered AMD on the channel not that long ago, so go check that video out. But there's more happening, more to talk about, so let's get into it. AMD's share price imploded following their Q4 release. But Thomas, you're saying this isn't something investors should get antsy about, right? Tell us more about this decline. Right. I think this is a knee-jerk reaction to, to the guidance, which really should have been kind of expected. Um, so the results were solid for Q4. Um, as expected. So no catalyst in that Q1 guidance was a little bit weak, weaker than expected. So we have some stock price selling off. But within the results, what I see is um, a bifurcated market that's going to come into alignment later on this year. On the one hand, we've got AI and cloud driving results, driving growth. On the other hand, we've got, uh, what was it? It was the gaming and the embedded markets were both down. So those two markets are supposed to return to growth by the second half, second half of the year, when those two forces come into alignment, I see growth really accelerating and outperforming even what are already pretty robust um, expectations for the second half. Thomas, yeah, Lisa, I'm, oh, go, go ahead, Lacey, go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say, I think Thomas mentioned something about AMD having an NVIDIA-like quarter. What do you mean by that exactly? And Chris, go ahead, jump in here too as well. Well, what I was gonna say was, you know, and this ties in nicely with where we're going with the NVIDIA-like quarter. Um, I think some analysts are reacting to the fact that uh, on the call, I guess, last night, Lisa Sue talked about, I'm sorry, CEO, Lisa Sue, the CEO, I didn't want to leave that out. <laughs> um, she referenced the fact that NVIDIA would have a $400 billion total addressable market, TAM, uh, for their accelerated computing by 2027. And I think there might, some of the sell-off might be some analysts are choking on that a little bit. Uh, the growth is going to come from, as you would expect it, from AI and the build-out that's going to happen from that. But I think I think some, some analysts might be um, trying to process through that and figure out if that's a believable number. Yeah, right. Um, as far as the NVIDIA-like quarter goes, AMD totally had an NVIDIA-like quarter in, in two segments, data centers and client, which are both focused on the cloud and AI. So uh, data centers up 38%, client was up 62%. Those were offset, however, by a 17% decline in gaming and a 22% decline, decline in embedded. So yes, a <clears throat> NVIDIA-like quarter, but offset by some legacy weakness. Yeah, I've got a couple of things. I'll jump in on that, Lacey. You know, the... Uh, one of the things that we've been talking about in our last video with AMD was the uh, MI300 chips. Mm -hmm. And uh, AMD beat their sales forecast of 400 million for the quarter. They exceeded that. They've raised their guidance for 2024 from 2 billion to three and a half billion dollars. And I just heard Lisa Sue talk uh, on CNBC this morning and after she got done, the analysts were saying the three and a half billion dollars is probably conservatively low. Well, right. uh, she was, yeah, and she was asked about the gaming question because I think that's a really good point you brought up, Thomas. She's viewing it more as a cyclical thing. She's mm -hmm. she's tying it back to supply and demand, and she said this is kind of a normal uh, thing that they're going through right now. She does expect some weakness in the first half because of some oversupply, but she figures that's going to normalize and there will be growth in the second half of the year. Okay, let's talk about some more of the good news here, the margins. AMD's margin expansion, both on a GAAP and adjusted basis, is something worth noting. What are the details here? Well, right, so what we're looking at here, and that is I mean, it's sequential improvements. So margins are really kind of flattish from last year, but what we're seeing is, um, is normalization. So the uh, normalization that happened over the course of the last year has kind of uh, worked its way through the system. The company is no longer being impacted by a lot of the same issues that were happening in 2023. Margins are beginning to expand. The critical detail is that margins are expected to continue expanding in 2024. So we'll see some YOY growth in that respect, even in, uh, even in Q1, I think. All right, so what are the key factors or catalysts here that investors need to be monitoring uh, in the coming months um, to maybe assess the accuracy of these growth projections and the overall health of AMD as a stock investment? 
where you're going to want to watch results from the other cloud companies, NVIDIA, but also Microsoft and Oracle, people like that to see what kind of demand that, that they're having. Uh, the results from Microsoft suggest that demand for AI chips is huge, robust. Microsoft is accelerating its, its, its guidance. So I see that impacting AMD. Um, as long as this story continues to unfold in this manner, um, I believe what Chris said is right. Uh, the 3.6 billion target for MI300 sales is probably very, very low. So, uh, yeah, there... from what I'm hearing, Microsoft likes the MI300 chips already. So they're they're a pretty good customer of AMD already. Right. So AMD listed Amazon, Google, Alibaba, Microsoft, and Oracle, all as buyers of the chips. Yep. They listed uh, Meta. They listed um, Supermicro, HP, Dell, Lenovo, all as users of the platform. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge win for the company. Um, you know, maybe they don't gain market share on NVIDIA, but they certainly will not lose any. Um, yep. Sales should be real strong this year. Mm -hmm. All right, well, there you have it. A closer look at AMD's recent performance, growth prospects, and what is driving the market today. We'll be right back here at Market Beat to keep you up to date on the latest news so that you can make smart investment decisions. Thanks everyone for joining us today. We'll see you in the next one.